Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This is episode number 12 in our Let's Play series, playing as the German Empire in this game being made by Game Labs that is currently in early access, and it allows you to design warships in the age of the battleship and fight them in tactical 3D battles. This is episode number 12 in our Let's Play series, as I said, so we're a ways into the campaign. And so far, the war is going very well for us. Uh, we have a ton of victory points, a huge discrepancy between us and the AI. Yet in the last couple of episodes, the AI has started to sink a few more of our ships than we're used to. And they've also been producing a ton of warships. So it'll be interesting to see if the British shipyards can maybe uh, make up for the lack of the AI's uh, tactical ability just through sheer weight of numbers and crush us under British ship ship building, which is how the British won the arms race against Germany uh, before World War I even broke out. So it certainly isn't implausible from a historical perspective. With that being said, we're about to fight a major battle off the coast of England. We have five armored cruisers lining up against five British armored cruisers. And so this is probably the closest thing in this war that we've seen to a genuine sea battle where line of battleships may line up and sort of pound each other from range uh, in sort of a, a Nelsonian way. But we'll see if that indeed is what occurs. This was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel from a couple of days ago. So we're going to go ahead and jump back into that, and I hope you guys enjoy. Catch you guys at the end. And we're back, and we're ready to fight a armored cruiser battle, which who knows, could decide the fate of the war. The British have been building armored cruisers like gangbusters. They're, I think they were at a low of around 7 or 8 a few months back. Now they're up to 18. We've been sinking their light cruisers much more quickly than they can build them so far, but the armored cruisers not as much. Um, they actually have built a couple new battleships as well. They were at four, and now they're up to six. Um, so yeah, this could be important if they lose five armored cruisers. That will basically negate uh, a lot of the work they've been doing here lately. But uh, we're going to be fighting the Berwick, Donegal, Essex, Good Hope, and King Alfred with our own Limburg, Blucher, Hansa, Irene, and Stier. Let's go ahead and fight. Fight! Okay. Our ships are in two divisions. Why we've got one armored cruiser set to s green, I don't know. Let's just have it join the battle force. Smoke is to the west, which is the direction we're heading roughly. We'll go ahead and adjust course a little bit. We've got the Irene. Are these all of the same class? So, wait, no, the Limburg is of a different class. She does not have the five inch turrets near the rear. So we've got four ships of, of one class and one ship of another. The rear five inch turret is not present on the Limburg class, the Limburg class is faster, however, 1.5 knots faster, so it makes sense why they set it to screen. Slightly less firepower, much better armor scheme, however. That being said, we're going to have her join the battle line anyway. Uh, is the game better and not just a beta? Well, I mean, the campaign is definitely new since 2020. I've seen some improvements to the gameplay AI I don't know that I've seen a ton but I've seen some all right so you can see these ships are now all right so we should have everybody in line now and now we're just sailing toward the enemy smoke which is annoying that you can't see I would love to see that oh there we go we're running right into the enemy formation here here we go boys we have torpedoes we don't know if they do actually before we like go completely gangbusters let's take a look at what the enemy has so these look like heavier guns i'm gonna go with eight inch guns and in their main turrets single funnel 
eight inchers and a single funnel. So, so far it looks like these three ships are all of the same design. In theory, they have crossed my T because I've sailed into it. So let's cut in behind them before we take too much damage. And get my broadsides into action. I don't know again if their ships have torpedoes. Looks like this is... The Berwick doesn't show torpedoes on here. Neither does the Good Hope, so that could give us a, a pretty big advantage if it comes down to it. Let's have everybody focus on the Berwick. Tell everybody to shoot at that same target. I would like to focus all of our fire on one enemy ship to try and overwhelm it and just whittle them down one ship at a time. We're at just outside of a kilometer, so we should have pretty good accuracy at this range. Our lead ship, the Irene, is taking a fair bit of fire damage so far. I'm not sure if this is a different class or not. We're kind of raking the Berwick here. All three en engines on the Berwick, by the way, damaged or destroyed. Really going to hope that the Essex doesn't have torpedoes. Barrick is repairing a lot of that damage. Let's turn in here and see if we can't fire torpedoes at the enemy. Switching our fire to the uh, Essex, at least with our lead ship here. Gonna try and cut these two enemy ships, the Essex and the Berwick, off from the rest of the formation over to the right here. The enemy armored cruisers are faster than all than my older armored cruisers, but slower than my Limburg. Right. Irene's taken damage and is no longer the lead ship. So we're gonna detach her. So she becomes the lead ship. Berwick is suffering a fair bit of damage here. Kind of broken any kind of neat line formation here. How would you fire your damn torpedoes here? Doesn't look like the enemy's got any. There we go. Berwick's done. Flash fire. Oh no! Our own ship, the Steer, just had a flash fire. I think. It looked like the rear magazine on the... Uh... Did the Essex have one too? Well, we sank the Essex. She, maybe she just took torpedo hits. I'm not sure. But two of the enemy armored cruisers just went up in a split second. That was confusing. The steer somehow... That's the second time I've seen a ship with a flash fire survive tonight i had i don't think i've ever seen that before now that that did happen on a, a handful of occasions in this era where the the flash stores did their job um i want to say it was the lion where they uh quick thinking individual flooded the magazine before the whole ship went up at uh, was it dodger bank and then uh the germans had it happen i think to der flinger at uh at jutland but in this game, I had never seen that before, so that's new. Oh, not Dare Flinger, Sidelets. Okay. Well, I've got one ship. <laughs> I've got the uh, Irene all the way up here on her own. Meanwhile, that uh, turn and then the damage to steer kind of messed with our whole formation so these four cruisers are all back here while Irene tries to take the uh, Donegal the rear of the the enemy formation by herself 
It's now three armored cruisers, although I can't see where the third British is, to four German. By the way, I love the name Seidlitz, and I love the name Deerflinger. Such, those are just kick-ass ship names. That's like right up there with indefatigable. Indefatigable. Lion, meh. Donegal, engine one damaged, repaired, damaged. Lol. Sir, we've repaired the engine. Everything is grand. Clang. What was that? We took another hit in the engine. It's broken again. God damn it. All right. Come on, guys. Get the fuck up. I know you're, like, trying to avoid collisions, but you're just out of the fight completely. Get up to fucking speed and get going, Hansa. Shouldn't be trying to avoid collisions anymore. All right. Speeding up a bit. Irene is all the way up here on her own. We lost sight of the other enemy cruisers, though they're still shooting at us. Mokta. Yeah, but that's like named after someone. I guess side, uh, Sidelets. There was a general one named Sidelets, wasn't there? But Der Flinger, is that named after anyone? Air flinger. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. Mispronouncing. Mispronounce the word pronounce. pronounce. So what, that's what streaming it, you know, late at night will do for you. All right, Irene, I want you to turn in Donna Gall and try and get a torpedo into her. Blucher, I'm, I'm well aware of. I know that's named after someone. Field Marshal at Waterloo. and many other battles in the prior campaigns. All right, Irene, let's go. Seidlitz was a Prussian general under Frederick the Great. Shows what I know. But Der Flinger? Who is that? I'm sure they're all people. Who is Prince Eugen named after? Uh, uh, get it? Because it's in the name, Prince. All right. Anyway, uh, Donegal's taking a whole bunch of engine damage. Let's get some torpedoes in on her. There we go. One. Hit a midship. Fires and flooding everywhere. Not sinking quite yet. Come on, you damn bastard. Go down. I get you're trying to get everybody in a nice, pretty formation here, Hansa, but just go. Get the hell up there. I guess I could turn around. I can't even see where the enemy is up ahead of me, so I guess we'll just finish off Donegal and we'll settle for a three to one victory. Gorg van der Flinger, Field Marshal of the Prussian Army during the Thirty Years' War. God damn it. I know a fair bit about Prussia during the Napoleonics. Don't know very much about Frederick the Great. I feel like that's kind of largely like, I don't know, just a blind spot. And uh, Thirty Years' War, I know about it, but certainly not any of the field commanders. So, All right, so let's go turn back and finish Donegal. And then I think we'll settle for that victory. Three to one, it'll close the, the deficit of armored cruisers slightly, getting a little bit closer to us. I think right now they outnumber us more than two to one, so uh, three to one victory is, is certainly in our favor. I figured when we cut off those two rear enemy armored cruisers, that was going to limit our ability to win a completely decisive victory. 
but I'm pretty I'm still happy with the result here. You know, if someone will fire a damn torpedo. Guess that one might be the one that's still reloading. Who knows? Maybe the enemy ships will turn back toward me now that I got my other four armored cruisers coming up here. I don't see any fire coming from the horizon, though, so probably not. Yeah, kebab, the AI decides when they fire. I could change it to aggressive. That'll make them more likely to shoot even if they're not going to hit anything because they're bad. But it was just the tube is still reloading. Shouldn't be an issue now. Oh, you're right. I didn't lose that CA. I was so convinced it was going to sink. It's just crippled back there. So three to nothing. Even better. God. Okay. Fire the torpedo anytime now would be great. At this heading, you shouldn't be able to miss. There we go. Fish out. With an engine down, I can't imagine the enemy armored cruise ammo detonation. Well, it wasn't even needed, but hey, whatever. They had an ammo detonation that would have sunk it anyway right before the torpedo showed up. Ready to go, uh, I think a few updates. I haven't been following it super closely, but I've noticed a few new things, like a newspaper article telling me the British replaced their uh, head of their admiralty, so. Okay, so Essex, Berwick, and Donegal all get sunk. The other two escape, 1,500 to 31 victory points. The steer took moderate damage and a single fish, and I would call that a pretty damn good victory, three to nothing. There you go. So that brings their armored cruisers down from 17 to 15, or 18 to 15, I guess. Well, we're at 10. And they lay, and they complete two more, so they're back up to 17. God damn. They're also apparently moving a whole bunch of ships into Rossyth and perhaps Plymouth from Scampa Flow, by the looks of it. So we can see they are moving ships around. Can you interdict ship transfers? That would be interesting. I mean, you can't tell your ships what to do yet, so I guess not. But all right, what about those new? So those new torpedo boats are set in being. So let's change that. Let's make sure all of our ships that are at sea are in sea control. It is more expensive because your ships are actively patrolling against the enemy but you don't do any good in port despite what the kaiser may think so let's switch them all to sea control that should give our transports a little bit more protection in the north sea transport capacity is back up to 95 percent so that's good And then research, what are we working on now anyway? We're still five months away from big guns. So that'll be nice to get to. Who knows, maybe we'll even have some torpedoes. Or not torpedoes, some submarines, although not really there yet. We don't even have, we haven't finished researching a steam-powered sub. We could cut that time down considerably, but I, I don't know if the war will still be going then. Finances have taken a bit of a hit from about 54 million to 37 million at the negative 2.6 million per turn. Big part of that is all the ships we're building, specifically six battleships and on a bunch of CLs. I mean, maybe we should build a new CA. Be nice to get a bigger cruiser hull. All right, let's move forward to it. We lost 10 transports in the North Sea. How? To what? I get that they have more torpedo boats than us, but we've got a lot deployed in the North Sea. Uh, 
a CL battle. Ooh, that sounds like a knife fight. We're three years into the war, by the way. Where are we at right now? 55,000 to 12,000 victory points. They built a few new CLs, it looks like. All right, well, let's jump into this battle. Fight. We could auto resolve, but these are pretty even fights. I don't know that I'd trust the AI to do that. The Moonshin is leading the way. All right, so where do we need to go? West. We're already kind of heading that way, but we'll turn a little bit. And times 10 speed, go. We're charging toward the enemy, the enemy of our nation. I don't know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't sing. I already make up enough bad fake songs for, for my daughter. Uh, let's see here. Rough waves, strong gale, stormy weather. Wow, accuracy is going to be a problem here. Negative 30, negative 15, negative 18. Not a good sea state for guns. Perhaps good for uh, torpedoes. We shall see. Dark matter, thanks for the follow. Let's charge in on these guys. Fuck them, we're going to go for a night fight or knife fight. Son of Demir, thank you for the follow as well. We're going to charge in with these uh, light cruisers here. Crown Colony, something else, and something. A whole bunch of something. Southampton. Get our hand on the pause button. Hot over. The enemy only has, looks like, four torpedoes in their uh, shipping here, so that's actually a, a really nice thing to know. If we get into a, a dodging torpedo fight, we should have the advantage from an ammunition perspective. One thing that is a little no annoying with the game is I don't think it really models ammunition ranges. Like, you can't shoot beyond your range, but I don't know that I've ever seen a torpedo, like, actually run out of fuel mid... 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 whatever, you know, while it's on its way. Got one on the rear of the uh, Retribution here. Although we're probably going to take a fish to our midships of the Moonshin. Shit. So what I was commenting on that, you can see this fish running through our formation, despite it being well beyond the one kilometer ish range. So Munchen dodged a second torpedo from Southampton. Retribution is not doing great. Maybe we'll take direct control. I don't think Retribution will be able to fire torpedoes toward the Niobe in its current location. But we can certainly shoot fish at her. So one is out from Niobe. Got it. That should be it for Retribution. It is. She's sinking. So we'll move up the line here. It's now four versus three.
These guys are considerably slower than my light cruisers. Almost four knots slower. You have the torps run out? I've never seen it, but I don't know. It's weird. If it says that it's a one kilometer range, then why wouldn't they run out? Oh, shit. Pause. I think I waited too long. Munchen is just a torpedo dodging machine. We'll see if she can dodge this one. Uh, nope. I think the enemy have much more powerful torpedoes than I do. And we're losing an armored cruiser. So, three versus three. Although, I don't see... Ah! Where do we want to go? Turning in seems unwise because it's already past our bow. But turning away is just going to give us a stern hit. There we go. They missed. Whew, that was close. Meanwhile, we've got a fish out towards Southampton. I think she's going to avoid it too. Got a second fish out towards Southampton. I'm not using aggressive torpedo firing here. This doesn't seem like it's the most... Actually, don't turn into it. I don't want to close range at someone who's firing torpedoes at me, especially when he's probably got a broadside fish ready on that side. Aren't they supposed to have a fourth light cruiser? Why do we only see two? Did I sink two already? I thought I only sank the one. She's dead in the water. And going down. And so one more, the crown colony that we can see anyway. You've seen failed gyros? I've never seen a dud. Where are you going, Niobe? Are you trying? Uh, heat seeking missile, go collide. What was the logic of that moronic turn? Anyway, closing in on Crown Colony now. Oh, my other ships are all going the wrong direction, boys. I guess they're all set to their own battle line formation now. Get your asses back here. Colonies like 1v1 me, Niobe. 1v1 me. You would like them to be in game. They're not in yet. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things I'd like to be in the game that aren't yet. Looks like there's some smoke over here. Maybe that's where the fourth enemy light cruiser is. Yeah, it looks like a cruiser smoke screen that way. Alright, so we are moving at. 20, 20 knots. The enemy can't make more than 17. You'd think we'd make up some ground here. Ausberg and... Right, so Ausberg, you join that. No. You guys move up in formation. I don't want to have to micro you. But you'll probably do something like almost collide and just be dumb. All right. Maybe we can cut in front of them and close a little bit more quickly. Maybe still has five more fish. We did lose the moonshine, which kind of sucks. Yeah, you are. You are going to do something really dumb. Good job, AI. Fucking bumper car maniacs. Crown Colony's got a fair bit of fires. You can see as we look in on the ship, a whole bunch of fires all over the ship. You can see on its 
animation here, a lot of the compartments are ablaze. It's going to eat out the heart of the ship somewhat and create some structural damage. Niobe, meanwhile, not suffering much damage. Our gunnery seems to be much better than theirs. They have heavier guns, but we've got the uh, advantage in gun numbers, but also in terms of uh, gunnery, it looks like. I think this 5-inch CL is the new design, so maybe this is a new ship with a newly commissioned crew and not a lot of experience. Whereas our ships have pretty much all been in service for some time now, so they've got pretty experienced crews. Okay. Surprised there's no engine damage on her yet. Orb, thanks for the follow. Appreciate the support. Fires have reduced their structural integrity below 60%. Fires are a slow death in this game. The other cruisers are starting to come up, so we'll turn them to cut off the enemy. Crown Colony's fires have brought structure damage below 50%, or structural integrity below 50%. We're in torpedo range for the Niobe. Not a lot of flotation damage so far in the enemy ship. She's also already mid-turn. Bear of Dice, thank you for the follow. We've got a fish in the water, but there's no way that's hitting. The enemy is a fish also. We avoided it. It was a poorly timed shot. We've got another fish coming. Another poorly timed shot. Was that two fish from the same broadside? Did do that. Alright. She's sinking, Crown Colony. Let me smoke's due east, but we'll end the battle there. So three light cruisers sunk, one of our own, of 1,100 to 500 victory points. The AI is doing a fair bit of attritional damage, especially with as quickly as they're building ships. That could add up against me, especially when you consider all the commerce losses we've had. We definitely need more light ships. But we're still, we've still got a healthy advantage in the, uh, in the victory point tally. Nothing in March, so we'll move forward to April. It looks like there's another port strike that's going to be occurring. So three battleships, two light cruisers, and two torpedo boats versus a lot of enemy torpedo boats and transport transports. So we must be striking. So we're near Yarmouth. Okay. Got it. I don't know that I like the idea of charging right in like this. All right, so this is port strike. We've also got a convoy battle. So a convoy battle with two armored cruisers. A port strike with three battleships, two light cruisers, and two torpedo boats against five of their torpedo boats. I don't know what the 70 means. 70 verse 39, like what is, is that total ships? Oh, okay, that makes sense. What's our building situation look like? Three months on the battleships, two months on the light cruisers. Finances are hanging in there, 26 or 29 million in reserve, almost 3 million against us. We also lost more transport, so we're back down to 91%. Research two months away from big guns, which are going to be 13-inch guns, so we can make bigger battleships. We need a bigger battleship hull, though. I could have sworn I researched... 
the like next size up in terms of battleships, but maybe that was another game because I don't have that option yet. Almost a twelve thousand ton shipyard size. What's the uh, limit on the on the current hull? This tumblehorn hull up to eleven seven. So we can't even really build it up to twelve. We can build it up to eleven seven, which would be about. 700 tons heavier than the new battleships we're building of the Brandenburg class, which I have a middle main turret and then a fore and an aft. I guess we could revise the Brandenburg, add 700 tons, basically take the same design and just add additional secondary guns because we're a little bit light on the secondaries. We do have 12 four-inchers four and casemates, but... There's a lot of casemate spots here empty for lighter guns. We do have five inchers and turrets behind here, so we're about to get six of these bad boys with our 11-inch guns, which will be heavier than I think our current battleships have, what, nine-inch guns, which were loosely based around some of the German battle battleship designs after the, the historical Brandenburg class. Because the Germans, for whatever reason, like the like the lighter guns. Even on their battleships, they would arm them with nine point four inch guns for a long time, thinking that the rate of fire was was an advantage. But with that being said, it seems like this turn has quite a few battles, at least two major battles that are worth fighting, and uh, we're already almost forty minutes in. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up here. The war continues to go well for us. I think the Brit the British are attriting us a fair bit, but we have a bunch of ships that are about to come online in the next two to three months that should hopefully make up for most of our losses. And uh, we'll see how things progress as the war goes on. I keep expecting the British to collapse and they keep surviving for months, uh, much, much longer than I think they will. So, uh, you know, I thought maybe like five episodes ago, this series would be over and it's not. And they're actually inflicting more casualties on me than they have at any other part in the war. So, Maybe we're not close. I don't know. I guess only time will tell. But uh, that'll be for another time. That's another story for another episode. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.